lovelies how's it going hope all is well welcome back to my channel today i am here to tell the story of chrisita cage toaster who was 28 years old when she disappeared in detroit this video is to bring awareness to the injustices in our community i mean no harm to the families and friends of the victims all information included is public knowledge. The information included was gathered by local news outlets. In 2009, on a crisp day in Detroit, towards the end of October, Chrisita Cage went missing. Rosita Cage Toaster and her husband, Johnny Toaster, filed a missing persons report after their daughter vanished. Detroit police had discovered an abandoned car owned by Chrisita on Bell Island, a large island parked east side of Detroit. Her ID, purse, and cell phone were inside, but there were no signs of the young woman. Chrisita's family spent the next six years searching. I knew I had to do my own work, my own detective work. Got pictures out, we started putting posters up. She told news outlets that she asked investigators to focus on her daughter's tattoo, a large rose with her husband and her nicknames in it. Please focus on it, on the tattoos. One descriptive tattoo was the one with a big rose that said, my husband's name is our nicknames, Blue and Rose. Despite the distinctive mark, the case remained unsolved. However, the family stayed hopeful. Christina's family had to continue to put this case in their own hands. And unfortunately, the police had no progress on the investigation. As days passed by, the trail became colder and colder, which caused her mother great stress that took a toll on her, which landed her in the hospital. I never would have thought I'd be living this nightmare. This is hell. My sister said my ribs was showing. I got sick. I was admitted to the hospital. She decided to come up with a new approach when it came to her daughter case. Rosita determined that her best hope with finding her daughter would to be enlisting the aid of a National Missing Persons Association. She relayed to them the same information she gave the police. The organization contacted the Detroit Police Department almost immediately. With the help of the organization, the DPD was able to uncover information about the case. As it turned out, there was a body found in 2010, just five months after Casita went missing. On it was an unmistakable tattoo, a big rose with blue and rose printed underneath it. The police told Casita's mother somehow her daughter was found in the river. So for almost eight years, it took outside intervention in order for them to find Chrisita's body, which was discovered five months after her disappearance. Her family was extremely devastated. I don't want this to happen to nobody. The system has to do better. They have to do better. And the question that everybody asked how did this happen? Their daughter's body was pulled up from the Detroit River five months after the initial missing persons report, but the police and Wayne County Medical Examiner's Office investigators never realized the body was the missing Detroit woman. The medical examiner, according to the mother, performed a cursory death investigation, not a full autopsy, and tagged her Jane Doe. The cause of the death has never been determined. One of the major reasons the body was never linked to the missing persons report is that both Detroit police who pulled the body from the river and the coroner recorded their daughter as either Caucasian or Hispanic when she was black. She was Hispanic or Caucasian and this is what they claim the mix-up was. After spending nearly a year in the coroner's cooler, the body was buried in a pine box along with other uncontrolled or unidentified human remains in an unmarked grave. She had remained there since March of 2011. She got a name, she had occupation, she had a mother, father, family that loved her dearly. She wasn't just a number. A lot of people had questions for the police for mishandling this case, and this is what they had to say. Her body had been in the uh, river all of that time, so, you know, the complexions and things of that go undergoes a change. It's kind of hard to elaborate on that. The young lady was identified by the tattoo that the parents told them about day one, and this is their response to it. During that uh, time and period, in uh, Detroit history. I cannot really account for 
what uh, may or may not have happened. But what I can say is that the team that we have in place today, they were able to make a turnaround in 24 hours and being able to connect the dots. There is no excuse to how this case was handled and they caused that family unnecessary pain. Rough. It was no easy test of going through the eight years of Bedouin not knowing what you were. Everybody is, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm so No, you're not sorry. You can't feel my pain. You didn't go through what I went through all these years. And if there's somebody else going through this, I don't want to see nobody ever have to go through this. It, it has to be a better system. After they found out about their daughter, they wanted to make sure that she had a proper burial as well as they wanted to retrieve her belongings. Unfortunately, they wouldn't give it to her when she first reported her missing because they said it was evidence. Every item, including her purse and her cell phone, cannot be found. A lot of things that raise red flags is the fact that the cause of death was still ruled as a drowning, but the reasons why is still undetermined. And like her mother said, she didn't just go to Bell Island and jump into some water. It's so sad because her family believed that it was foul play and it's more to the story that meets the eye you guys let me know your thoughts and your opinions about this situation please be respectful in the comments i'm keeping the family in my prayers i was unable to find any updates on this case i'm not sure if the family did sue the department or not something should have been done for their wrongdoing very thankful that organizations such as missing persons go out here and help these families try to solve some of these cases because local police departments sometimes don't do enough you gotta keep each other protected love you guys thank you guys so much for watching talk to you guys later bye